Hello, this is Pat Lebecchia. I'm the CEO and founder of Oasis Pro. It's a real pleasure to be here and to present with my colleagues, Evangel Sutlafis, SVP of ATS Operations, and Shelley Gard, SVP of Structured Products, our insights regarding the securities market in the digital blockchain space today. And it's a real honor to be presenting to the to the attendees of the STO Security Token Offering Summit in Seoul today. Um, just a bit of background from each of us. I'll start. Uh, my background is investment banking, 25 plus years. I was at Credit Suisse versus Boston, ran a global group there. Bear Stearns ran a global group there and ran capital markets for FTN Midwest, which was a subsidiary of FTN Financial. And got involved in the blockchain space about four years ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, our focus was really blockchain versus crypto. And once we understood and I understood that the two were very different things and that blockchain in and of itself was a transformative uh, technology in terms of the blockchain, not only for lower costs and um, uh, security, but also uh, reduced settlement times and many other benefits as well. So Evangelist, why don't you go over your background briefly? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Pat. And by way of introduction, my name is Evangelist Sunafis, SVP of ATS Services at Oasis, as Pat referenced. Uh, my background goes back to the late 1990s with the electronification of the public equity markets. Uh, worked on the self-directed side for Bank of America and J.P. Morgan. And also prior to joining Oasis Pro, spent my career at a company called Gain Capital and EFX, CFD, and Derivative Space. Been working together with Pat for over three years now. Uh, very excited to um, dig deeper into these discussions with, with you all. Thanks. Shelly, over to you. Thank you. Um, so I'm Shelly Garg, and you know, as Pat mentioned, I'm SVP of Capital Markets and Structured Products here. I have also almost 20 years of experience in capital markets, structured products, as well as specifically the U.S. Uh, residential mortgage market. Uh, most recently, I was at uh, Jefferies, the Securitized Markets Group, where I was working as an investment banker and working with early stage fintech clients to uh, you know help them with a more efficient cost of capital and prior to that i was in freddie max capital markets team where i was working on their distressed assets portfolio and you know i was responsible to shed the credit risk for the firm which we did through a number of strategies like securitization whole loan sales and synthetic transactions as well uh, so I've been at Oasis for, you know, uh, from the beginning of this year. And, you know, again, I share similar thoughts as Pat and Evangelos, you know, that this is a transformational technology. And I think this can has a, this has a lot of uh, benefits in terms of efficient processes, in terms of cost and time. Thank you. Great. Well, um, just before we get started, I'm going to give a, just a quick overview of what Oasis Pro is both inside the U.S. and outside the U.S. and in regards to large financial institutions. So what we are is a global fintech company. We have many subsidiaries, but we have five verticals. Those verticals are in the areas of uh, tokenization, um, cap table management or transfer agent, um, KYC AML, issuance platform, and a secondary trading platform in the United States and ATS. Everything that we've done is grouped together and integrated, uh, but modular through an API stitching dashboard, which is very tied into how large institutions uh, integrate with uh, partners such as ourselves. What does that mean? That allows us to uh, stitch together APIs. And what we've done is uh, what's called for the tech individuals in the uh, in the audience, a low code, no code, drag and drop feature in regards to our APIs syncing up with large institutions, internal APIs. And it's, it's very exciting in regards to what we do there. In the US, we're also a broker dealer and an investment bank. Uh, we not only uh, have our phenomenal tech stack, but what we have is the ability to actually uh, structure deals and distribute deals and close deals for our clients, all within the blockchain digital space. Now, in regards to the institutional market, I would say we've been at this for several years, 
And our focus has always been institutional. When I say institutional, we view the market as institutional first, meaning large global finance companies. So think of it as infrastructure. The fabric of global finance is our target. And that, it, it, and then there, there is a waterfall impact in regards to large institutions, smaller institutions, accredited investors or high net worth investors, and then eventually retail. But the credibility has to be done at the highest levels. And that's how Wall Street and global finance, in my experience, has always worked. Over the last several years, there were a lot of um, independent uh, building of not only blockchains, there are a number of blockchains in the market, but also in regards to uh, large institutions building their own networks in, uh, in the blockchain space. <clears throat> that Web 2 to Web 3 bridge is very expensive, and there weren't a lot of wins in that area. Now, Oasis Pro solves that problem with a modular approach, an end-to-end -end solutions market provider. And uh, and, and the approach is also regulatory and compliance forward. That's very important. We're regulated here in the U.S. and we've built our entire system for our partners outside the U.S. And hopefully Korea is one of those areas that will we can take our tech stack with that regulatory and compliance and, uh, tech features incorporated and work, work with local partners in regards to, for instance, in Korea, the Korea, the uh, Korean securities laws. So that's been the approach that we've taken. And I believe that once the FTX debacle, three arrows and et, et cetera, uh, uh, Luna, et, et, et cetera, you know, those debacles occurred, the large institutions became very nervous not about blockchain, but certainly about crypto. And the movement to trusted partners such as Oasis Pro has accelerated tremendously since Q4 of last year and has just accelerated exponentially this year. As an example, there is Project Guardian in Singapore uh, run by the Singapore MAS. Uh, while I can't share details as to what Oasis Pro is doing, there will be an announcement soon, and it, uh, Oasis Pro is involved with several large global finance uh, firms in regards to uh, an approach on the blockchain space that is very exciting. So that's an overview for everyone regarding Oasis Pro. And let me get started. I'll start with Evangelos. Evangelos, what do you see as the current challenges today? Uh, regarding the critical adoption of security tokens by large financial institutions on a global basis. Yeah, thanks, Pat, and, and thanks for the overview. Uh, so with regards to the existing challenges, we've made great, great progress and strides, but uh, the lack of interoperability and the lack of standardization has hindered the ecosystem. We are seeing larger institutions, as you mentioned earlier, come into the fold. Um, and they're also helping to lay the groundwork, um, uh, working together with the likes of Oasis Pro, uh, amongst others in the industry, to really add a layer that is going to be more streamlined, something that's going to make even the user experience much easier to tolerate. Um, historically, we've seen Web3 um, be a little bit more challenging to the more traditional financial services firms and investors. Uh, so ultimately, we're all working together. The ecosystem is working to build this into a better process, right? Because that's the only way we're going to have the, 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 that's, what, that, that's the only way that we'll, we'll get uptake from traditional investors. Um, and you mentioned it earlier, Pat, but uh, the, the, the education bit is very important as well. Uh, we need to ensure that investors, institutions, our partners that we're working with recognize that digital securities, security tokens versus cryptos, they're very different, right? Cryptos are bearer instruments, whereas security tokens have the cap table, as you mentioned. And there's a, there's a much more, um, uh, it's, a, it's a much more safer uh, way to, to, to transact uh, as, as the guardrails are in place. And, and we, we've done that um, through what we built here. So uh, those are some of the major challenges that I pointed out, uh, although I think we're making great progress to um, alleviate them as the ecosystem continues to build. 
Great. Thank you. And I know, Shelly, you have a view on this. Can you share your view? Uh, sure. So I think just adding to what Evangelo said, I think what we are seeing is that mass adoption of this technology by the ecosystem has been a challenge. Um, and rightfully so, because, you know, a lot of these institutions, uh, you know, they already have a data system, uh, you know, in place, which as far as they are concerned is working adequately. So they really need a reason, uh, you know, and, con uh, and you know, they need to be convinced that, you know, if they do uh, spend the time and resources in upgrading and adopting this new technology, like it will actually turn out to be better than, uh, you know, uh, like what they have right now. Uh, you know, so I think that has been a challenge, like, you know, for the existing uh, folks to actually transition. And I think Evangelos touched on this other point. I think it's also been a challenge just for the ABS investors in general, um, you know, to adopt uh, to adopt this new uh, new system. And you know, kind of similar concerns there as well. Like they have their existing systems in place, they need to integrate, they need to spend time and resources on it. And you know, the community is very fragmented to begin with, and each one has their competing interests. So you know, I think all of this is leading to some. Uh, you know, challenges in terms of adoption. But, uh, you know, I think the folks are slowly and gradually adopting this and seeing the benefits that it can bring in terms of the processes or liquidity increase or, you know, the depth of the market is increasing. So we are seeing that, you know, slowly and gradually people are adopting and getting convinced to the benefits of this technology as well. And maybe Pat or Evangelos can highlight, you know, uh, obviously on the lack of legal and regulatory uncertainty which is just another challenge for folks, uh, especially in the U.S., to, you know, come and adopt this uh, technology because obviously they want more clarity on every front before they spend the time and resources there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Evangelos, do you want to uh, respond to that? And then I'll give my thoughts as well. Yeah, yeah sure, absolutely. Um, so uh, I absolutely agree. We require regulatory clarity, even though Oasis Pro has taken the directive of being regulatory compliance first and working within sort of the rules of the road. Nonetheless, the lack of clarity from the regulators, especially here in the U.S., uh, has really um, impacted, uh, I think, what, what eventually is going to be um, a rush to the benefits of distributed ledger technology and the blockchain. So um, once we get you know, more clarity on such things as stable coins and, you know, on-chain versus off-chain cap table and uh, those those types of uh, important, really, aspects to the ecosystem, um, I think it's it's just going to even lead to more institutional uptake. And, and that's what we're all about. We're here to support those institutions. Uh, turning it over to you, Patton, for, for, your, uh, for your insights as well here. Yeah, I, I, there, there is a, a lot of uncertainty. Uh, uh, I, I believe it's quite clear, but uh, in regards to the benefits of blockchain, um, that additional clarity would be very helpful. Uh, there was SDOs done several years ago, quite a large market. Are those safe? Are those not safe? Are they securities today? There's a lot of questions about it, at least here in the U.S. Korea is miles ahead in terms of the regulators and their approach. And, you know, that market is moving very quickly, as well as other Asian countries. Um, I, I think Asia in general is much further along than uh, many, many other geographies, including the U.S. But it, it eventually, you know, uh, from a global standpoint, uh, the U.S. will catch up. It has in the past. And um, what, what I'm excited about is that, Eventually, and this may be a couple of decades away, it could be sooner, there will be a global market. Now, the, the real friction points there are with the regulatory bodies in each country not wanting to give up their regulatory oversight. But with the blockchain, that is a possibility. Whereas right now, the technologies don't really can't speak to each other. Utilizing blockchain for the opportunity for secondary trading and reporting at a reduced cost is really uh, um, is, is, is really the holy grail at the end of the day. Now, um, I'm going to just jump ahead here and 
Um, I, I'm going to make a statement and then, you know, ask a question. I think that, you know, the majority tokenization has been discussed. That That's at the forefront, but that's old news. That's now new news again. There's large uh, infrastructure global finance companies are focused on it. Uh, but really the driver is cost. The benefits, and, and that's back office costs. Those back office costs by utilizing uh, Web3 technology, blockchain, again, Oasis Pro is a bridge between legacy Web2, Web1, and Web2 to Web3. We, we, we interface with both through our API dashboard. That's the driver. The issue is the institutions, meaning the buyers and sellers, really aren't demanding blockchain. And at the end of the day, they don't really care because the user interface experience is I want to hit a button with cert certainty that my transaction is going to get completed. And what happens after I hit that button really doesn't matter. So, so the, so the factors that we're, I'm seeing are that the institutions, buys and sellers are not driving this. They're not pushing for blockchain. And frankly, they haven't done this in the past except for settlement times. Blockchain can reduce settlement times from days to seconds to milliseconds or instantaneous. That's when the institutions will really have an opportunity to get the benefits of it rather than a lag between selling and having the ability to take that cash after selling and buying. Now, Evangelist, I'll come back to you in regards to the critical adoption point, and 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 also feel free to comment on, on my uh, my views there as well. Um, and what are the benefits and opportunities uh, that you see from the innovative innovative opportunities that security tokens, blockchain, uh, bring to financial institutions once they have reached that critical adoption point? Yeah, I think you're spot on, Pat, with regards to cost savings. I'll equate that to efficiencies, and I'll go back to the three pillars, which are always part of the conversations I've been having with, with prospective partners and, and issuers. It comes back to efficiencies, liquidity, and transparency, right? When you think about the cost savings bit, if you're able to digitize the process, digitization is not nothing new. It's been around for a long, long time, and, and, and companies have made uh, progress. Um, but we were, we were able to leverage that digital ledger technology with the efficiencies and adding to that the opportunity to expand or democratize access into uh, really lower minimums and the opportunity for more investors to participate in this ecosystem. Um, I think it's a win-win across the board. So that's you know, the efficiencies that come back to the issuers or GPs. With regards to the LP investors, um, ultimately, the benefit is the opportunity for liquidity. Um, I, I think we want to highlight the word opportunity because there may be investors in, uh, in the tokens that uh, determine they want to hold for the long term. But nonetheless, if an emergency arises, if I need liquidity, I can transact on an alternative trading system or an MTF, depending on the, the global uh, situation or circumstances, but that that has historically not been there, and, it, and it's, it's an added benefit. And then the transparency, and quite honestly, Pat, when you think about what we spoke about earlier with the regulation side, the regulators should be happy that they're gaining even more transparency into the ecosystem and what's happening. I mean, uh, we're, all, we're all very much familiar with circumstances where there was naked short selling and you don't necessarily have that sort of button to press to see everything that's happening on the back end here that level of transparency is there and it's in real time um so all these i think are key benefits i'd also say that the opportunity to create very bespoke products because of this digitization tokenization is is another is another positive one and i think it'll evolve as the ecosystem grows Great. Really, really uh, insightful comments. Uh, would you agree with those comments, Shelley? Yeah, no, I think I'm honestly just, uh, you know, at the same, um, you know, mindset as uh, both of you. And I think you already alluded to a lot of points, you know, that I think as well. So I think overall, there are just a lot of process improvements that can happen in financial services transactions, which can lead to, 
you know cost and you know time efficiencies you know just as an example uh, you know as you mentioned pat like you know when these transactions happen or when a sale and trade happens uh, you know uh, there's generally due diligence that gets done by the buyer of this uh, transaction or so some level of due diligence gets done when these uh, tokens are settled and uh, you know if if the underlying asset is tokenized you know then an audit trail gets created so you know this should have a uh, you know significant benefit in terms of cost reduction of these you know due diligence cost then i think you already alluded to this to this as well like you know a lot of the back office clearing settlement uh, you know the kyc aml processes you know if these are automated you know there's a lot of cost and process efficiencies that can be achieved here as well um you know then at least in you know the structured products uh, transactions you know there are also a lot of intermediaries that um, you know are involved in doing any transaction so you know as you we can cut down or at least reduce the cost of this middleman you know through digitization or automation which has been already happening and you know folks are adopting this technology in small bits and pieces like you know there are a lot of cost and um, you know time efficiencies that can happen and settlements as well like you said you know instead of doing t plus 2 or t plus 3 we can almost go to instantaneous settlement you know through a blockchain uh, settlement process and you know that is hugely you know um, you know obviously the volume of these trades can increase which ultimately lead to lower cost and uh, uh, you know mass scale adoption of these uh, technologies and i think evangelo is also kind of mentioned to the liquidity aspect um you know so i think these can also benefit on uh, increasing the liquidity of these transactions um like these structures that we create you know in capital markets like we can even go down to a more granular level uh you know uh, for the investors where their actual risk profile can be met with the underlying asset and that could eventually reduce the cost of uh, you know the funding for the uh you know the borrower and the cost of doing these transactions as well That, those are excellent, excellent points, Shelley. And uh, uh, you know, I, I hope that the audience is uh, uh, is learning, uh, you know, regarding our knowledge, our interfaces with the markets, in regards to what we're seeing. Now, I do notice that we're running out of time here, so I'm going to ask um, Shelley first. Um, you know, there there may be areas we haven't touched upon today that you'd like to share with the audience. I'll uh, leave it to you for any closing comments. you know i think we're seeing a significant amount of folks that are you know getting interested in the technology uh, we are seeing uh, you know a lot more folks who are looking to do offerings creating bespoke structures like i just mentioned which uh, you know where you can actually match the investor risk profile to an actual granular property level uh, uh, you know that they would like to be interested in so i think the interest that we are seeing both from the issuer community to digitize parts of the system or even like the you know the end offering like the you know we are seeing significant advances i think in that and you know this is just i think ultimately what we are hearing from lot of the folks is that you know they all, every most folks believe that this is the future and the change is happening uh, you know gradually and slowly but you know folks are you know warming up to this concept of digitizing the process of uh, you know capital markets of financial transactions great thank you thanks for those uh, closing remarks evangelos would you add anything to that yeah no that was great i i, I just want to say that although we've all heard it before tokenization is not a solution in search of a problem this the, the, the what we've discussed today and what we've alluded to throughout these discussions clearly highlight why this is important why the ecosystem will grow through further diversification extended democratization of you know assets that historically have not been accessible by a larger audience <clears throat> excuse me this is all um moving the um the, you know the the, the tradfi or traditional financial services ecosystem um in the right direction so just hopefully those 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 um those terms resonate with with a larger group here and um you know i hope uh, everyone found this helpful uh you know our discussion today just a couple of uh, additional points from our standpoint uh korea is a very important market for us mirei 
is an investor in us. Uh, we did a strategic round uh, about a year and a half ago, and we were honored to have Mire invest in us. Uh, and yeah, Asia and Korea specifically, um, we are uh, very focused on expanding our partnerships and collaborations. And we're a first mover. Again, we're very regulatory and compliance forward. And we're a first mover in terms of this technology, and we've been quite in it innovative. Think of us with large institutions as a Swiss Army knife between the Web 2.0 to Web 3.0 bridge. And that's really what Oasis Pro is. So if anyone in the audience would like to do a follow-up with us, we're ready. Uh, we're happy to do it. Um, we, uh, we do travel to Asia on a uh, more frequent basis, and we'd be happy to have those discussions with anyone interested as well. And again, we hope that you found today's discussion very helpful. And again, I, I'd like to thank um, the SDO Security Token Offering Summit organizers for inviting us here, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.